Hey, how's it going? My name is Lever KT, and I'd like to officially welcome you to Lever Analytics. I don't know how you got here. I'm just glad that you are here. So what is Lever Analytics? Lever Analytics is a sports-based podcast um, talking about mostly the NFL and NBA. i like to shout out uh, my sponsors, Real Ones Productions. You can check them out on twitch.tv slash Real Ones Productions. Also on YouTube, uh, Real One Productions, and on Twitter at Real Ones. So growing up, I always wanted to know the why. So my mom or my dad would tell me to go do something. I'd be like, why? They'd be like, because I said so. Deep down inside, I want to be like, what does that even mean? But I knew if I said anything, oh, yeah, <laughs> it was going down. The the woodshed, so to speak. Uh, but I, I, I like to bring up things like this. Week 14, Cleveland Browns, they just scored a touchdown with 13 minutes and 34 seconds left against the Baltimore uh, Ravens, and they're down eight. It tells you, kick an extra point. That's what the NFL book tells you. Analytics tells you, go for the two-point conversion. That's what they did. They cut it to six. They made it a very interesting game. The game did in, in regulation. I think that's what they wanted, even though the ball didn't roll Cleveland Browns' way. But why did they do that? Analytics. Analytics told them, yo, kick the kick. Uh, uh, if you kick the field goal, you're playing for OT. But if you go for two, Go down six, get a stop, score another touchdown. You take the lead, we can possibly end this game in regulation. That is analytics. Also with this show, my goal is to simplify some of these terms that don't make sense. Like you'll have something like a projected draft pool cap. And you're like, what is that? At the end of each episode, I'm going to have a glossary of certain terms that I use during each episode. That way I can simplify like, oh, that's what that means. Um, projected draft pool cap means is each draft pick you have in NFL drafts has a certain number, and that certain number will pretty much tell you how will it uh, affect your cap. Or what is dead cap? That's a, a, a term that we hear. It's like a fashion faux pas in the NFL. Like That's a term that we hear all the time in the NFL. It's a very important term. If you have a lot of dead cap, then nine times out of ten, your team is paying players – and they're not staying, and they're still paying players after they are on their team. We've seen that in the case of Albert Hainsworth and the Washington uh, football team. They were Redskins at the time, where he was still getting paid, and he was no longer in the NFL. Bad contracts are a real thing. So I'm about to do this series. It's like the all-season series. Uh, my biggest issue when I'm watching a sports show is that I feel like the takes are are natural, I feel like the takes are their takes is, is really how that person feels on a lot of these sports shows. But the overall content is cookie cutter. Uh, we're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys, no matter how good or bad they are. We're going to talk about LeBron James, no matter how good or bad his team is. And it's not fair. There are fans everywhere. So my goal with this whole offseason moves that need to be made for teams that didn't have a, a, a good season and teams that had a great season who's going to be losing uh, players in the offseason and how do they deal with that to continue to be the great team they were you're going to hear me use terms like the Larry Brown rule the Larry Brown rule I'm going to explain that Larry Brown was the MVP of the Super Bowl when the Dallas Cowboys played the Pittsburgh Steelers he got a couple picks in the Super Bowl off of Neil O'Donnell got paid by the Oakland Raiders and ended up didn't didn't even doing anything so a lot of times you'll see players Get paid because free agency and a demand. You see them do something in a big game, but don't realize that is this a, a, a career type of thing or is this just, hey, he just got lucky. So the first thing we're going to break down today is the Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals finished 8-8, eight and eight, third in the NFC West, and I got to tell you, I was extremely disappointed with this team. Going into the season, I, I really had the Arizona Cardinals fighting for that first pick, even though, in my opinion, they're in the toughest division in football. I know the NFC South is going to have something to say about that. I know that uh, maybe the AFC North has something to say about that. But if you look from top to bottom, the 49ers, when healthy, can't compete with anybody. The Los Angeles Rams, when healthy, can't compete with anybody. Seattle Seahawks, which we'll, we'll get to later in this offseason series, I don't know what's wrong with them. I said uh, during this uh, past Sunday's um, episode of R1P Sunday on Twitch, I don't know if they're fixable. I really don't know what they're fi if they're fixable. The Arizona Cardinals, 
Now, before I start with the, the Arizona Cardinals, I know going into this year, everybody's going to be saying, oh, uh, Cliff, Killen, uh, Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury may be on the hot seat. How? How would he be on the hot seat? You can see potential in this team. I know the NFL's mantra, not for long. I hate that mantra. My biggest issue with the NFL is there isn't a farm system. Think about it. In the NBA, you have a farm system with the G League. In the NHL, there's a farm system. In soccer, there are so many leagues and, and minor leagues. In soccer, you get to see these players as professionals. MLB, you got triple A, double A, single A. In NFL, you don't have any type of farm system. And the fact that they now have two preseason games, do you find a Terrell Davis in a preseason game? Do you find a Tony Romo in a preseason game with this with this new system? I don't know if you find those players. Do you find Alpha Morris in two preseason games? I don't think you do. You don't. The four preseason, ga- preseason games was the closest thing to a farm system that the NFL has. You don't get enough time to see these players as professionals. And that's the one thing I can't stand with the NFL. Back to my original point about Cliff Kingsbury. I think he's been doing a wonderful job. If there's something I think uh, Cliff Kingsbury can improve on, it's the personnel choices. Arizona Cardinal ran a lot of 10 personnel in 2019, and we sent some 10 personnel this year. 10 personnel meaning one running back, four wide right receivers. That's cool and all, <laughs> but in the NFL, I think if Cliff Kill- uh, uh, Kingsbury uh, would like to um, enhance his team, m- maybe more 11 or 12 personnel, I think would be uh, a, a better option, um, especially with two tight ends, a back and two receivers. You can be a lot more balanced on offense. That's actually what you see the Cleveland Browns, who I think is the most balanced team in the NFL. Uh, you see them run a, a lot of that. So coming into the draft, the the Arizona Cardinals got the 16th pick. So at the 16th pick, you're thinking, okay, well, they may lose Patrick Peterson this year. Larry Fitzgerald may retire this year. Um, Pringle may be leaving the team. Devondre Campbell may be leaving. Marcus Golden may be leaving. Hassan Reddick may be leaving. Kelvin Beecham may be leaving. So we we attack this draft, and then, uh, you know, a lot of the scouts are going to say, well, you know, J.C. Horn, who has the NFL uh, pedigree, son of former New Orleans Saints uh, receiver Joe Horn, it makes sense. Okay, he's going to be the heir apparent to Patrick Peterson. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I look at I look at the Arizona Cardinals as a team. Yes, they have needs. They didn't make it to the playoffs. They they finished eight and eight. It's like mm, they could definitely use help at cornerback. I I don't want to say they can't use help at cornerback. They can definitely use help at cornerback, especially if Patrick Peterson is leaving. But here's the thing. Now. I don't know if Kyle Pitts is going to be available at 16. But if he is, they have to find a way to get him. And it goes back to what I was talking about earlier. Running more 12 personnel. Running more 11 personnel. They have to be more balanced in the NFL, and especially in that division where time of possession is so important. All righty. So I'm looking at some of these contracts. On the Arizona Cardinals. And some of them I have issue with. Chandler Jones. I don't feel like he's really played at all. As of late. His PFF grade was a 62.6. $20 million cap hit. And that means his money on the cap this year. But. uh, If they release him. They will get a a, a, a five point three million dollar cap penalty, but for this year's cap, and I think they're about middle of the road in cap space remaining. I think they have like eight point six uh, million left in cap space. They can free up fifteen million, so that would take that eight point six uh, million in cap space and make it twenty three million in cap space. Uh, they're going to obviously lose some players. Um, I was looking at uh, the Arizona Cardinals overall team rankings last year. They finished 10th overall. They were 6th on offense, 10th on defense. 
it's no way in the world they should have been eight and eight. You you look at some of these games and they just don't make sense. Like the Arizona Cardinals is one team in the NFL I cannot figure out. Kyler Murray didn't get sacked that often. Uh, he cut his sacks almost in half this season alone. What's going on? It is just not making sense. Like they're pretty decent on defense. They are elite on offense, but they could be better on offense. And I feel like that one position they are not getting enough production out of is their tight end. I don't know. Uh, they they definitely got some questions to answer in our off season, uh, especially with Kenyon Drake. Is is he their guy? Are they going to try to figure out a way to re-sign Kenyon Drake? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, do they believe Chase Edmonds can be the every down back? Maybe, maybe not. So I'm looking at their draft picks in the first round is uh the 16th pick overall, and the sex second round they got the 49th pick overall. In the third round, they got the 80th pick overall. In the fifth round, they got the 144th pick overall. Don't have a sixth rounder. Uh, don't have a fourth rounder. And in the seventh round, they got pick 208. So, you know, they might get some compensatory uh, picks for uh, last season uh, losses. It'll, it'll, it'll all depend. Uh, but I'm looking at some of the calculated uh, market values of some of these players that they made losing. Marcus Golden, $13.5 million. I don't know. <laughs> Hassan Reddick, eleven point seven million. I don't know. Patrick Peterson, at this state in his career, I still believe he can be a a, a key piece on the team, and I think maybe he could he should consider maybe transferring over to safety. Arizona doesn't really need safeties. They got one of the best in the league in Buda Baker, one of the most underrated players in the league. Oh, by the way, it's not a big hit on their cap either. They're going to have to pay him at the end of uh, this upcoming season. Uh, Kenya Drake. The market value for him is eight point four million. That's not bad. That's not bad. You got to figure out who you want to keep, and then you also got to look at, alrighty, how much? Who do we have? Who are we paying? DJ Humphreys. He's getting paid nineteen point nine million per year, but he's worth every bit of that nineteen point nine million he's getting a year. I honestly thought, I don't know if he should have made an all a pro team. But I feel like it could be argued. But should he have made a Pro Bowl? Yes, he certainly should have made a Pro Bowl. He has a PFF grade of 88.3. He led all tackles and snaps this year. Snaps played with uh, 1,129. You're like, oh, snaps played. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means he was there every game, every down of the game he played. That's an important stat to me. So is, is, he, is he worth the money he's being paid? Absolutely. They should thank him. Chandler Jones, is he worth the money he's being paid? No. But is he worth that that money at $20 million and the cap hit, which will end up being dead cap for next season? Is he worth that? That's a question you might want to ask. For $15 million in savings, that can take uh, that $8.6 million we talked about and instantly make it twenty three. That's interesting. DeAndre Hopkins. His cap number for this year is only 12.5. That's amazing. That's beautiful. Jordan Phillips, kid addition that they picked up from Buffalo last season. 12 million, that's not bad. And you 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 got him in, in the free agency, and we all know that free agency, how that money go up. Players get paid in free agency. We've seen what Super Mario Williams got paid in free agency uh, by the Buffalo Bills years ago, or where Olivier Vernon got paid, way overpaid in free agency a few years back. In free agency, these players get paid. Um, one thing I would like to see with the Arizona Cardinals next year is kind of how uh, Vance Joseph, if he, if he ends up staying in Arizona, how would he use these players defensively next year? Isaiah Simmons, I felt like we seen spurts, but we didn't quite see enough of him. How would he be used? I would love to see uh, Isaiah Simmons get used like Tyron Matthew, a.k.a. the Honey Badger, how the Kansas City Chiefs use him and with that, that, that deep cover, too, that Lovey Smith cover, too, where they have him closer to the line. I think Isaiah Simmons is, a, is, is, a, is an elite tackler. He's great in space. Got good speed, but how will he be used? I feel like him and Buda Baker are kind of 
the same play, player, but Isaiah Simmons just hasn't gotten there yet. What are we going to get out, out of Byron Murphy next year? Byron Murphy cap number is pretty daggone good. Andy Isabella. Well, he make the team next year. It's time to put up a shutout for Andy Isabella. Christian Kirk. I like what I've seen out of Christian Kirk this year. But when I look at this team, I'm just like, something isn't making sense. What is it? You can look up, up and down this roster. You look at uh, their their overall record at 8-8, eight and eight, third in NFC West, and be like, what is it? I don't know. And I'm trying to figure out what is what is the analytics telling me. One thing the analytics are telling me is that their time of possession, with as good as their running game is, a lot of that production comes from the quarterback. Three and outs. 2019, we seen Arizona Cardinal have so many three and outs, so many 50-second possessions, and the defense like, damn, can we get the one commercial break? <laughs> That's all they want is one commercial break. They couldn't even get to that. Cliff Kingsbury, man, I think you are a phenomenal coach. There's no way you should be on a hot season next year. But you know what the NFL means. So you're going to have to bring it next year. I have a feeling no matter what his record is, if Cliff Kingsbury don't get to the playoffs and they don't show well in the playoffs, that may be Cliff Kingsbury's job. And as sad as that sounds, but that's the NFL that we are in. It's like that in the NBA as well. We see gut coaches get fired all the time. I think the worst scenario I've ever heard of is Marty Schottenheimer after taking the Chargers to the playoffs at 14-2. and two. Nah, we don't want you anymore. Say goodbye. I think the keys for Arizona in this draft, yes, they need help at cornerback. But what do you what do you prioritize? Do you prioritize need or do you prioritize BPA, which is best player available? If and somehow I don't think he will, if Cal Pitts even gets to twelve, the Arizona Cardinals don't consider moving up, there's an issue. I think that will alleviate their time of possession issue. Max Williams, I think he'll be a great secondary tight end. He can be a camera and break, but you need you need a dog as that first tight end. Somebody that can block and somebody that can catch catch the ball from that position and just be a a a, a matchup nightmare. You know what D Hop is going to give you. Christian Kirk, I'm telling you. Next year is going to be Christian Kirk's year. I I have a strong feeling. They just got to figure out the running back situation. I'm expecting big things out of Arizona next season. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you my prediction for the Arizona Cardinals next year. I think Arizona can win a division. And I say something like that, and you like, how? Well, the first thing is improving your time of possession. The next thing is fix this personnel issue. I know, Cliff Kingsbury, you like that 10 personnel. I know you do. But 11 personnel, 12 personnel is a lot better. It's a way to be a lot more balanced. And I know, you know, what your mindset is. 10 personnel, got four, you know, four receivers out there, spread the defense out, and you pretty much got an RPO option where Kyler Murray looks at the defense. Oh, let me hand this off. The D end comes crashing. I'm taking it. Um, just get a little bit more creative with your play calling. I would love to see what Brian DeBall could do with this Arizona Cardinals offense. Not saying that Cliff isn't the guy because I believe he's the guy. I truly believe in him. And he, sh he shouldn't be nowhere near the hot seat next season. But it would be interesting. Thank you all for tuning in to the debut episode of Lever Analytics hosted by me. Lever KT. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I thoroughly enjoyed doing this episode and taking a deeper uh, look at the Arizona Cardinals, not only at what they need to attack this offseason, but also looking at their contracts and how they can best utilize those contracts. So we're going to give an update as we get closer to the draft on with this team, and then we'll look at free agency and how they attack free agency. Um, but as promised, I'm going to do a glossary at the end of each episode so you all know the why. One of the first things I talked about early in this episode is the Larry Brown theory. So if you remember, the Larry Brown theory is the theory in which uh, the cornerback for the Dallas Cowboys in Super Bowl 30 had two interceptions. He took one to the crib bowl, 
against the Pittsburgh Steelers and Nell O'Donnell, and he got MVP of that Super Bowl. The upcoming free agency, he was a free agent, and he got paid, but his pay didn't equal the play. And it's more, and, and it's so important that that play equal the pay. So shout out to Laurie Brown. Hopefully you're somewhere listening. Also, we talked about dead money. What is dead money? And the example that we used is Albert Hainsworth, how the Washington football team at the time they were the Redskins were still paying Albert Hainsworth a couple of years after he was no longer on the team. That's dead money. Right now, the Arizona Cardinals have over $4 million in dead money, contracts that they pay players that are no longer on the team. What's the importance of dead money? The importance of dead money is so that you don't just offer a player a five-year contract, then cut them and... The guarantees aren't played. That's why we have dead money. So we talked about a couple things today. Don't be afraid of uh, of these big words. I promise you, here on Leopard Analytics, I got you. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, it's always easy to get in contact with me on Twitter at LeverKT. You can also catch me on R1P Sundays um, on twitch.tv uh, slash Real Ones Productions. It has been an absolute pleasure. Remember to keep it analytical. Peace.